Hello! Um, I haven't been on for a really long time and I feel very guilty about that because the whole purpose of this channel is to educate and uh, advocate and um, encourage and support everybody living with EDS. But my journey the last sort of year really um, has made it, I think it's probably going to be a two part video, has made it quite difficult. Um, and um, I just wanted to, I thought I could talk to you guys about my medical past, shall we say. Um, because I think one of the main thing with EDS that doctors don't understand is it's really hard to join everything up. It's like a dot to dot. It's like doing a dot to dot in the dark. When you, is that a good when mm -hmm. Tony's, Tony's sat there? Um, and you have to have that like eds in your head as a doctor to be able to do that and it's because it's edge a... in your head eds in your head it's in your head eds in your head it's in your head <laughs> sorry this is how we get through life because it's really shit at the minute um yeah so i thought i would uh share my medical history with you to give you an example of the wide spectrum of eds. You may have noticed I've lost a considerable amount of weight. I've lost five stone. I was a healthy weight to start off with and I've now lost five stone. Um, at the moment I am, I'm just under six foot and I weigh eight stone, mm -hmm. eight, eight stone, three. eight stone three. Um, <laughs> I've been diagnosed with a severe nerve disorder in my stomach which is why i'm not tolerating any food like feed obviously i have my feeding tube so but it's not like eating um but i can't tolerate anything it's it and the doctor when he told me he just kept saying to me like this is going to be really hard we were hoping that they could relocate my um feeding tube into my intestines so what they do is they sort of they have an extension that they put on and it wriggles its way into your intestines. Um, unfortunately, because I am so violently sick, uh, they can't do that. That's not an option, apparently, because their concern is that uh, if that happens and I'm sick, I because I'm so violently sick, the tube could end up coming out and going into my lungs. So that's not an option. So we're sort of running out of options. I had a very, very big cry today with my poor mum um, because I just, I don't know where this is going to end. I really, I don't. It's very, very frightening when you're starving. Very frightening. Um, so, right, here we go. This is the life of Ed's, okay? So um, I'm going back. I'm not going back to my childhood. <laughs> I thought that might be a bad. So I'm going from when I was uh 18 is that when i had my appendix done Tony? Mm -hmm. right sorry right okay so here, here you go i'm 31 now um and i was yeah 18 so um i had my appendix removed i had a laparoscopy to explore uh because my then periods were so horrendous um i had a ileostomy done so um, I was in and out of hospital all the time. I'm sorry this is a bit TMI, but basically my bowel stopped working and I was still able to eat then, So, but nothing was coming out. Um, and I didn't go to the toilet. How long was it, Tony? It was three months. three months. Three months. And what happened was my bowel just got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger because of the EDS. Um, so I had to, and it was poisoning me because it, um, you're still absorbing stuff. And, and by the time it's been in there for like, you know, a couple of weeks, it's just toxic. Um, so when that happened, uh, my period stopped and I haven't had a period since. Um, so I, first of all, it, I had what's called a, uh, what is it, the ileostomy, the first one? An end. An end one. So basically what they do is they, make, they create a stoma and disconnect the um, colon. Um, but that's, and we had to pay for that privately because the NHS said that they would, um, and I adore the NHS, don't get me wrong, I'm not bashing them at all, but the, the sort of stance was that they would be able to act what, if my bowel and when my bowel perforated, otherwise it wasn't seen as like urgent. And they were willing to do the surgery, I was just gonna have to wait a long time for it. So um, my very kind parents paid for the endoliostomy. Then 
um, I needed a total colectomy, which is where they remove the entire colon because um, all of that stool and nastiness was still in there, still poisoning me, making me very, very poorly. Um, and uh, uh, a friend in Canada and my mum and our entire community came together and um, paid for me to have the total colectomy privately. They did like music gigs and poetry nights and it was, oh my goodness, I can't put into words what it meant to me now, ever, forever, um, to feel that love and support from a town, you know, it's amazing. Um, so where are we, where are we up to? So up to total colectomy, that's done. Um, I had to have, I was in a hospital an hour away for six weeks, which meant that Tony, because when I go into hospital, Tony signs a carer's contract, which means that basically he's responsible for all of my care apart from medication. Um, and, uh, so I was in a hospital an hour away for six weeks. He would drop our Amelia Rose off at school, drive an hour to the hospital, spend a couple of hours with me, drive back to pick Amelia Rose up from school, bring her to the hospital and then drive home, home again. And he did that every day for six weeks. So he was, you were, it was four hours in the car, wasn't yeah. it? Every, every day. This is why I love this man because he is so dedicated to Amelia and I. And it's, it's, um, yeah, I'm going to get all choked up. So I was there. Um, I had a nasal feeding tube um, put in. I was there for six weeks. Um, at the end of it all, I was told that uh, it didn't matter how many times I vomited. I had to catch it in my mouth and re-swallow it until it stayed down. Um, which is disgusting and uh, is what I tried to do for, you know. Um, then, uh, so I had that, I was in there for six weeks. Then, um, I'm, this, is actually, this isn't all in order, sorry, it should be. Um, I was in hospital with another feeding tube, a different feeding tube. Uh, this is about three years later. Um, I had a feeding tube for seven weeks. Um, whilst I was in hospital, I got double pneumonia and, uh, things were very, 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 very hairy. Um, ironically, Should've I had shaved. a hair in my mouth. Huh? Should have shaved. <laughs> um, yeah, that was a very, very frightening time. It really was. Um, yeah. And they said, I had, cause I had the double pneumonia twice. Um, they said that, that, that there was a chance that it would do permanent damage to my lungs. Um, but that, yeah, that was a very hard time. I was in hospital and, um, oh, I'm going to get all choked up. I was under the care of the um, intensive care team. Sorry. And um, my grandmother passed away, my ma. And um, it was really hard, wasn't it? I couldn't, I do. Sorry. It was very difficult because I couldn't, um, I couldn't go to a funeral because I was, um, in intense, well, yeah, having intensive care, one on one nursing with double pneumonia. It's awful. But this disease just takes, it takes and it takes and it takes and it takes and it takes. And it's, it's barbaric. It really is. And that doesn't mean that there's not hope and that doesn't mean that there's not, you know, the community is amazing, absolutely incredible. We're all such positive, determined people, like dedicated to each other to improve everybody's quality of life. Um, but it's still very, you know, it's still very difficult. Um, so I've had double, uh, don't, yeah, double, you know, twice. I've had two hip surgeries in London, uh, one in Reading, one in yeah one in reading one in london the one in reading i used to have like hip dislocations every now and again and i was just like oh my hips gone out and would whack it back in even as a child and i had to go to reading with the nhs to have this first surgery inside your hip joints you have something called a labral which is uh the nurse said it's like a soft uh toenail and where i dislocate they torn and folded over so they had to like stitch them back up again he found a little like bit of bone was it on my pelvis or on my hip yeah. and uh sort of without questioning why it was there he shaved it off and i went from having 
hip dislocations like every now and again to moving across the bed hip dislocation getting into my wheelchair hip dislocation it i get so it's ridiculous they they are so unstable um i also dislocate my shoulders i dislocate my knees um my fingers um i think that's it um so i also had to have steroids a uh, steroid injection which is massive needle into the hip joint and i was conscious and um they sedated me and one of the things with eds is that you you, you don't really respond to you you can not respond to medications and sedation and stuff like that like a well a well be as i call them um and i kept saying to them i'm i'm not I'm not safe. I'm not saying. And he's like, no, no, you are. You're just nervous. You're just nervous. And he did it. And it was horrifically painful. And he said to me afterwards, he's like, we didn't get the, the right amount of um, sedation for you. And that was such a traumatic experience. And it's a really, you know, clear idea of how people are treated by different doctors oh hello we've got princess tabby oh hello she's like mommy love me okay so where are we up to right i get the most horrendous migraines um i this is uh, you know this is bothering me i said to turning off put my um put my uh sunglasses on and you know he's like no no people need to see your face tabby wants to be famous say hi you say hi just go up a little bit go up a little bit oh baby 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 Say hi. Oh, there she is. Mwah. Good girl. Good girl. Yes, you are. She's the prettiest little dog you'll ever see. Okay, so migraines. Yep. Really bad brain fog. Uh, or mental clouding, as it's called. Um, which is where... Uh, the only way that I can describe it is that it's like early dementia. Uh, I forget things. I don't, I, I'm really disorientated. It's, it's rubbish. Right, I'm going to stop here because this is already like 12 minutes and I'll do another one to carry on. Mwah!